Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be installing OpenShift on Azure. Now this video is part of a three video series where I've installed GitHub Enterprise Server on Azure over here. Now we're going to be installing OpenShift on Azure. And in the third video, we're going to deploy the Actions Runner controller on OpenShift to support self-hosted runners for our GitHub Enterprise Server implementation. All right, so some of these settings or some of these uh, configuration options that I'm going to be using to install OpenShift are, are specific to this install. Uh, primarily, I'm going to be using the same network that I'm using for my GitHub install. All right, so uh, if you're interested in doing this type of installation, uh, there will be a link in the description to the GitHub repo where I've got all this scripted out for you. All right, so let's take a look at what we're dealing with first. Uh, if we go to resource groups here, we'll see that there's two resource groups. This one here, ocpnow.rg, has my domain, ocpnow, in it. And there's two entries for the GitHub server that uh, I can get to. So GitHub and then the wildcard GitHub. Under the other resource group is where our uh, implementation for GitHub Enterprise Server is. And it's up and running currently. And I've got uh, this VNet. And the VNet has a uh, large IP space. See here, this is the default one. And there's currently only one subnet, which is for our enterprise server. All right, I'm just gonna call that out real quick. And then additionally, we've got our network security group that just has a, a few of the default entries that I created as part of the GitHub enterprise uh, installation. So I'm making reference to that because we will be altering those in order to get our OpenShift to share that network. All right, so let's just jump into the OpenShift installation. If we look at, uh, uh, cloud.redhat.com. I need to grab a couple of utilities here and we can go ahead and log in. And then when I go to OpenShift, we can click create cluster, scroll down. It doesn't really matter which one I'm using, but I'm going to scroll down from cloud and grab Azure. And again, it doesn't matter here. We just need the utilities and there's the OpenShift installer we have to grab. And this is supported on Mac OS and Linux. And then we want to grab the OC command right here, the command line tool. And this is supported on Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. And we definitely want to grab our pool secret. That's going to be a required step uh, to get our install of OpenShift uh, running. All right, so make sure you grab that. Uh, I've already installed those tools here and I'll put links in the GitHub repo as well so you can go grab those. Because I already know the networking settings that I need over here for my GitHub Enterprise server, we're going to modify my custom uh, YAML file here and put it in my OCP now directory. Now, if you don't already have that, let's uh, we'll remove well, we'll just do a test one. You can do um, uh, OpenShift install create install config and just give it a directory like uh, test. And this will step you through uh, building your environment. I've already got a service principle created. So um, that's why this is pulling up. It already knows that it's there. I'll have those steps in the script for you. Uh, OCPnow.com is it. And we'll just see uh, red tests, our cluster name. And here's where you paste in your pool secret. All right. And once you put in your pool secret, then under test, it would export an install uh, file, right? The install config file. All right, so I don't need to do that because I've already got one created. So we'll just clean this up. And if we look at, sorry, I'll clear my screen again. If we look at the install config file, we'll see that this is a pretty pretty basic, right? So base domain here, I've got three workers that are gonna be created, three masters that are gonna be created. The uh, name of the cluster will be Red Cloud. Here's that network block. And again, if we go back to this, uh, my VNet, and address space. All right, we'll see that that's the same uh, VNet. And again, that's why this is important. If you're gonna have this on two separate networks, then you need to make sure that you're uh, not stepping over your address space, especially if you're containing everything in the same uh, resource group. But it just makes networking muddle. But anyway, so I'm gonna put it all in here. Um, so I've defined a couple of subnets that I'm gonna use. We're gonna call them OCP masters and OCP workers. And then I'm going to create a uh, Red Cloud RG uh, resource group for uh, the install of OpenShift, and it needs to be empty. We're going to use that uh, virtual network, this one here. All right. So then these two uh, resource or these two um, uh, VNets will be a part of that. All right. So that's uh, that's where we're at. So go ahead and close this. 
And just to make sure that it's clean, RF, we'll just delete OCP now and recreate it. And copy our install config into OCP now. There we go. All right, now before we get started, let's go ahead and put our network space in place. Okay, to make this easy on me, I'm going to uh, export a couple of environment variables. Uh, so the first one's gonna be my resource group, and that was Red Cloud RG. And the next one we're gonna use is I'm gonna set my service principal name, and that's OCP now SP. All right, so that should be good. All right, now let's go ahead and grab our scripts. Uh, the first one here is going to be to add um, our API 6443. Go ahead and run that. Next one is going to be to add our HTTPS uh, interface. So we'll go ahead and paste that in. And then we've got our bootstrap port. We'll make sure we add that. And we're adding the bootstrap port. And again, this is uh, we're only doing this because we're integrating with our existing network for the enterprise server install. Okay, we'll clear this out. And now we're gonna create our network uh, for OCP masters and it's prefixed with a dot 10 slash 24. And we're gonna add it to our uh, network security group and our VNet. So we'll do that. All right, and then we'll do the same thing for our OCP workers, clear the screen. There we go. Great. Clear. And then we'll create our resource group. Okay. Now let's take a look at it over here. So if we go to our network security group and we look at our subnets, we should have three subnets. Sure do. And then, uh, and they've all, these two have already been associated to it. So that's great. And let's see under uh, BNET we should have our subnets obviously uh, also created. All right, so good to go there. Uh, let's see, resource groups, uh, that's fine. All right, so all of our setup is there. I don't see the, there it is, okay, popped in. All right, okay, I just had to log in with my service principal real quick, so let's go ahead and get this started. We'll do OpenShift install, create cluster, directory, OCP now, and we'll turn on log level equals debug and everything loaded correctly there we go so we're building our OpenShift environment this is what I was looking for um, creating infrastructure resources I don't know if you saw that when it flew by right here so this is what I was looking for all right so we're all set good to go it's gonna start building everything out and then uh, I'll come back when this is done and we will uh, go from there all right see you in a bit all right looks like the cluster's up and running I was able to get to the website using the console URL uh, we have our admin account and password there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and load some self-signed certs into it. And then once that's done, we will uh, start our third task, which is setting up our enterprise server environment for ARC. We're going to create a couple of orgs, and then we'll start to deploy ARC into OpenShift. So uh, stay tuned to uh, part three of this three-part video series. All right, so I'll see you over there. Thanks. Bye.